this little farm is really coming alive. I'll be sharing with you several spring gardening tips, plus give you a farm garden tour. I've got my peas right here on some pea trellises, and as you can see that these peas are getting quite tall, they're starting to bloom, and these peas over here, they're only about a foot, maybe a little bit more than that, but they aren't even starting to bloom yet. They were planted exactly the same day, but the big difference was is these were under cover for about a month because we had a really cool and wet spring and peas don't really like that. So they were really slow to come up, but I think they'll catch up over this next week or two. But these peas here, as you can see, are planted really close together and peas really like to be crowded. So I really plant my pea seeds real close together and they do beautifully like this. And look here, there's already some peas. Just a little update on a couple of our beds that we've added this year. We've got four new ones. They're three and a half by five. And in this bed, we've got a lot of broccolis, cauliflowers, spinach, uh, celeries, a little bit of lettuce in this one. And we've been harvesting spinach on a regular basis. And before too long, we'll be doing some celery. The broccoli is ready to be harvested. And then there's a lot of Romanesco cauliflower. And this takes a long, long time. This bed here has a lot of vegetables that will tolerate shade. I've got chard, bok choy, and then we've got some lettuces in here. This bed, my granddaughter helped me plant. And in the middle here, we don't have much because there's been a robin hanging out in here, snatching some of the little seedlings in this bed. There's a lot going on this bed as well. So there's three rows of beets, a row of carrots, some short growing peas in here, and then I've got just a mix of brassica crops, like a Romanesco right here. And then underneath all of this, my granddaughter sprinkled some lettuce seed, and it's actually doing really nice. And come summertime or early summer, that'll take advantage of the coolness of the soil right underneath all of these leaves. And then behind me here, I've got six tomatoes that I planted a little bit earlier. And then right in the front, I've got some onions. So I really try to utilize this space wisely. We have several black currants here on our little farm, and I love these especially in the springtime. I've got these planted along this walkway that leads to my garden, so when I come through here in the morning time, those flowers are absolutely heavenly smelling. If you've never smelled a currant flower, you're really missing out. They will produce quite a bit of currants off of one bush. Usually a large bush will give me several gallons, and I love to use these in breads or just dry them, and you can use them in several different dishes as well. They do like the shade here just a little bit more because the leaves will burn out during the summertime here when we get 110 degrees. And so red currant is even more touchy, so the black currant like we have here grows pretty easily and it does reseed itself. So right now is a really good time to fertilize these guys. And behind me here is the snowball bush. This was my childhood favorite bush of all times because it's just beautiful, full of this beautiful color of white like pom-poms but these are great companions grown next to each other. This bed here was redone with strawberries this year. Half of them are bare root and half of them were plants. So I did remove some of the blossoms when I planted the bare roots, but I didn't remove them from the plants themselves because there was enough root system to support those blossoms. And they're looking really good, but they're starting to bloom now and this is the time that you wanna fertilize them. And because we have alkali soil, I'll use an acid mix fertilizer in this bed and I'll just slightly work it around the plants and be sure not to disturb any of the root systems. We also have a lot of blackberries all over and I like to stick these on our fences because it's just an easy trellis system that's already there. And our blackberries are just starting to bloom now as well as our raspberries. So this is a really good time to start fertilizing them. And if you notice, there's a theme here. When your berries start to bloom, it's a good time to fertilize. So I'll fertilize these and mulch with some compost. And once that they start that blossom process, we wanna make sure that we keep the soil moist. That will really help plump up those berries. Calendula is one of my favorite flowers to be planting in the garden as a companion plant. You can use it medicinally. It's really good to attract beneficial insects. But one of the things that I really like about it is it's great for making healing salves. It's a good skin herb. It's also really good to take in the springtime as a tea just to move that lymphatic system, especially after you've had a long winter. And you can also throw these little petals just in a salad. They're great for that. But if you're using it medicinally, if you're making a, an oil or a salve, you wanna make sure that you're collecting it with the brac on it. And that's just this green part right here. Even if you were to buy calendula, you wanna make sure that it has that. And then when you're drying them, before they're open is the best time to be able to pick these. The nice open flower of these really attract bees and other beneficial insects. 
And also the stem of calendula is resinous and it's really sticky. And so aphids stick to that. So it's kind of like a catch plant. So this is a really great plant to have in the garden. This right here is my garlic and this variety is a turban garlic. And it always ripens in mid-May. It seems to be right on schedule every year. And what it's starting to do is we're starting to get this die back down here on the bottom and even the tips we're starting to get some browning. What it's doing is starting to die back and push those carbohydrates down into the bulb. This is what's going to be stored and pushed down into the root system, that bulb, to create a bigger bulb. So this is totally normal and this is actually what we want to see. About two to three weeks before harvest time, we start to see a scape develop. And that's just a seed head that starts to come up right from the middle. And what we wanna do is wait for it to curl and then we snap that off. The sooner we do it, the better. It'll push more energy down into that bulb and create a bigger bulb. Plus, we get to use these scapes. They're awesome grilled. This variety here is Sicilian soft neck garlic and it won't be ready until the middle of June. And if you notice, we don't have that dieback like we did on the other. So that dieback is just an indication that we're getting really close within two to three weeks, it'll be time to harvest. But this, we've got about a month and a half before it's ready. I've got a lot of dual purpose plants right here, a lot of herbs and some other vegetables as well. So I've got some bee balm right here. And so I like this because it attracts the pollinators and I can also use the blossom on these and infuse it in honey. And then I can use this during the winter time and it's really great for soothing throats. I've also got some bronze fennel right here in the front and that's great just roasted with some carrots and some chives here and they're just about to bloom and I really like the blossoms just tossed in a salad just to give that peppery flavor. There's some cilantro down in here so it's kind of hiding and that's going to keep it just a little bit cooler so we'll have it just a little bit longer than the cilantro that is out in full sun. There's some horseradish here, and so that won't get harvested in fall time, but I like these right on the edges because they don't take up a lot of my garden space, and on the edge, we can really cram a lot of stuff in here. I've got some alfalfa even here, and I'll actually take that and I'll make a tea out of it and then use it for a spray, a foliar spray, or even a root drench, and it provides just a little bit of nitrogen. And then right here is a cover crop, or, as I said, a dual purpose, the fava bean. So I can collect the beans off of it and we can eat the beans raw or I can let them fully develop and let them dry. But the blossoms on these are really gnarly looking blossoms. They've got the black and the white and they're really pretty. And at this point, we want to pinch the tops off of these because that'll just really help plump up those beans. Plus, it really helps reduce aphids as well. These are our artichoke plants and these are some of the favorite things when people come to our garden because they want to know what they are because they're really neat looking and they'll get much, much larger. Now's the time to be feeding these so I like to just give them an all-purpose fertilizer around the base and then mulch these. That way it plumps those chokes up or those globes up really nice which will be coming on in about another month, month and a half around here. These flowers here are arugula, and I planted this from seed in the fall time, and so we've had several harvests through the fall, winter, and early spring, and then it wanted a bolt. And there's not much you can do about that because it'll just shoot these stalks up quicker than you can actually harvest, which is fine with me because then it becomes a pollinator-friendly plant. And I've noticed today that the bees have been all over it. They're quite active, and the flowers are quite pretty as well. They look like a little cross, but you can also use these just tossed in salads, and that gives you just that little peppery flavor. If you want to leave them on here for another month or so, then you can collect seed off of this. But for now, I'm just going to leave this because I don't need the space. It's great for the bees, and I like to toss a little bit of this in the salads to eat. The onions are coming along really nicely. We're getting a lot of nice top growth, but we've had some really strange temperatures that have really fluctuated really high and low, and this will stress an onion out and cause it to produce a little seed head. So watch them often, and if you start to see a little seed head start to form like this guy right here, you'll wanna snap it off. The earlier, the better, so it doesn't affect that onion. If it gets bigger, then you get that hollow that goes all the way down through the onion, still edible, but they're not good keepers. I got the potatoes in about two weeks before our last average frost date. But then we were kind of surprised and we got a little bit of a late frost. These guys came up really quick and they got some burn on it. Because they're a nightshade family, they are tender. And this is why it's really important not to plant your potatoes too early. And if you want to learn more about planting potatoes, then you can go here for more information on that. 
This high tunnel that I've got here was a real lifesaver for me this spring because we had a cooler and wetter spring than what we've had in quite a few years. So it was hard to get our crops in the ground but our temperatures are gonna be up into the lower 90s within this next week. So I've gotta get this off, but I'm gonna leave the frame up and then I'm gonna put some shade cloth over it. And that'll help keeping these cool season crops going just a little bit longer. I've got the clementine cauliflower already heading up and it's time to harvest it and it looks absolutely beautiful but I don't want to let this go too long because then it'll open up and it won't be near as good. And there's some purple cauliflower and green cauliflower in here but they're a little bit smaller. They're not as fast as that clementine. And I've got some snowball white cauliflower up there and it's just starting to form ahead and these were all planted at the same time but that clementine's really early. There's a bunch of spinach back here and then different varieties. We've got some really nice big spinach and the best way to harvest that is just by harvesting each leaf, which is tedious, but it's really well worth it because you harvest it all at the base, then it doesn't have its photosynthesis and it doesn't continue to grow that way. So just harvesting leaf by leaf with a nice long stem will continue that harvest. And then I've got lettuce that kind of was gone to seed and it's kind of taken everything over and it's really kind of like literally a hot mess in here. There's a bunch of blue dazzle kale in here that's great throwing in salads. Hackerai turnips in here, more arugula in the back, all different kinds of lettuces and we've got more cabbages that are just starting to form and we've also got radishes in here but a lot of these because it is warm they're already starting to bolt and go to seed. So what I've got left I need to get up this week. And then we've got some beets that are coming along really nice. We've got little baby beets that we can harvest this week as well. I hope you've gotten some garden inspiration and some good garden tips, and I'll see you in our next episode.